What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Let's play some more Machine Strike, shall we? This might take a while. Let's learn the train knockback tutorial, shall we? Ah, I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machines. Okay. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. It's true. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. That's what I figured the minus three meant, but I guess, you, you know, go. you never know. Now, it can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's standing on grassland terrain. This terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position, but they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now, the front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it, which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. Okay. Ha, see? When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Wow. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Makes sense. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you. You want to show you beating up my piece? All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do. So be wary. Right, so it makes sense. Flying on flying this machines would be bad. Terrain. Landing on it will take away <laughs> one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left. See, all you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again, or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemies so you're not completely helpless. Well, I think that's enough yammering for me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Beautiful. We're one step closer to mastering a machine strike game. Machine types and skills, please. Let's go. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? 
In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players would choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Mm. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. Okay. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponent. It's a melee In type. other words, it's machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gunner type machine here. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram type machine. Attack an enemy with it and it'll push the piece backwards like this oh oh well, you set me up that's messed up yo see now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board this is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground looks like we have one more piece to look at oh, now this is a beauty of a piece a dash type machine when it attacks it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path including your own so make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races you should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot otherwise you won't be able to attack at all here i'll show you look it even rotated your piece a nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set if you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and we haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. Thank you for the great tutorial. I appreciate it. All right, let's beat this person up, shall we? Let's do this. So we get to pick one of our pieces. I think maybe playing defensive over here. This is the play here. That's it for me. Boop. I got a tough fight ahead of me. Your move, Red. Weird, but okay. Just go ahead and overcharge it and take it oh. out. I had that one done and done buster all right medium practice let's go let's play uh yet again okay so we've got ram type when attacking from a hill terrain so we want the lance run over on our hills i would imagine I think I'm gonna work on trying to take the middle here if possible. Time to make my move. You're up, Red. Uh, 
Pick them up. Board's all yours. Lost a piece, piece, friends. We played defense too hard. All right, we're we're in a corner. We're protecting ourselves. Your turn. Hmm. We really want to play from our advantage is the problem. Ah, knocked right off the board. Protect his back there. Okay, let's see. Ooh, it's gonna hurt though. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> nice. You're up, Red. Oh, seriously? Ah, off the board he goes. Recovery. That sure dampens the forge. Oh, we overcharged it. What a play. Well, what a that's play. Done now. But I think I still win. Uh, nice. Got there like in I the lost. end. <laughs> Did we play that one a little poorly? Maybe. Did we still win? Uh, yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Get our lance horns. I think playing in like a group is just a better plan. to be mine. Let's take that. Let's just see what happens there, you know? I'm up. <clears throat> Ooh, that's what happens. That's bad. Yeah, good play, good that play. That was brutal. That was brutal. can't really I could kill it I could kill it one less piece on the board 
I would move him. piece where it was Dang. Uh, I think I've started this poorly <laughs> if you can't tell that was brutal hey now hey now get off that was a surprise Knocked right off the board. Oh, goodbye, friend. I knew it was coming. Still hurts to see. Well, that's done now. Your turn. What's sprinting do? I forgot. I need to remember what sprinting does, guys. Sorry. I still don't know what it did. Ah, I was hoping you wouldn't do that. Send him. Ah, off the board he goes. <clears throat> yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Now he's gonna try to kill this guy, right? Ah, I know. Right off the board. That was brutal. Get up there, take the spot. Hey! was the perfect spot I thought I was actually gonna kill him I didn't really look that much goodbye I won oh but I'll play you again if you want wait I thought you had to get to 10 victory points not Good seven luck. whatever whatever BS call BS on it to get serious board's all yours hey i like that piece where it was well it's dead now that's it for me Let these pieces get up there and start doing a little bit of work. Game, I'm telling you. I think we are just gonna overcharge here, and you know that one's not gonna kill it, so I'm not gonna overcharge Time there. To make my move. Ooh, that's gonna hurt though. Well, that's done now. Overcharge to get a double kill, Jesus. One less piece on the board. Ah, off the board he goes. Trim off. That's it for me. Hey! Oh, that was the perfect spot. Your voice is slightly now, aggravating. Not gonna game. lie. Even if I lost. Much easier the second time around, right?
regular challenge. Choose strength piece to create a set. You must use at least seven setup points to play. What's the board look like? Lots of grassland and hills, I think. Uh, grassland, forest, and hills. I have no idea what that orange one is. Can I guess it's hills? Well, grazers are where it's at with that much grassland for sure. We'll bring some scrappers along. Um, those might be hills. Let's take these instead. This is going to be fun. Think those are hills? I don't know. Board's all yours. Are you hills? You are hills. Okay, great. Um. Still don't remember what sprinting does. Take the middle, and we'll take a hill. Time to make my move. Your move, Red. on the board your turn well that's done now that was brutal Knocked right off the board. It's not good. I mean, she's going to kill it anyway, right? So it's not give her the opportunity. This wins me the game. Well, spark yeah, nice. my forge. You have beaten me on every one of my boards. It's because you suck. Now that deserves a prize, I say. Bristleback strike piece. Nice. There we go. Cool. I'll see you later, Aloy. That was fun. I'm glad we did that. And what else we got going on in here? Bristlebacks. you guys would like to check this out by all means check it out 
Oh, and also. Savior. Savior, thank you for taking the time. And my condolences that you had to endure all once bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's, it's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olvent up. What is this concession decree that Olvind wants? He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess, because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Olven get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but chain scrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the Bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience... Well... Let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the Mad Sun King. And with the Bristlebacks bringing work in the valley to a halt, Alvunt has plenty of time to pick at barely healed wounds. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Ulvind blasting hot air all the time? Ulvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. <sighs> well, I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. You said the Bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, maybe Ulvant will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. Maybe. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Let's go check out this as well. How do I get out? How do I get out? I'm stuck. Found it. Easy enough. I love the little mini game that they got in this one, though. I love mini games like that, even if I'm not too great at them. This one looks like it's going to be like a dueling fight pit challenge thing, so we're going to have to try this as well. You wanted to speak to me? Well, you know better than anyone it's a dangerous world out there, and not just against machines. Name's Odurk. This here's my training pit. Best place to practice close combat this side of the Forbidden West. Say. I wonder who'd win in a fight. You, the savior of Meridian, champion of the East, or the Enduring, master of the West. Who? The Enduring, a legendary Tanakh fighter, the master of masters. I've heard the Tanakh have training pits just like this one. It's how the warriors get so fierce, see? And only the very best from the pits get to train with the Enduring. 
So, to find the Enduring, I should look for these training pits if I'm ever out that way? You will have to go far if you do. The Tanakh are split into three clans. Three clans, three capitals, three training pits. My guess is you'd have to beat all of them if you want to train with the Enduring. If the Tanakh don't kill you on sight, that is. But that's a far spark in the wind. As for right now, I also offer challenges to test your fighting skills. Your eyes terrify me. Who would I be fighting exactly? You? Well, I know you're the savior and all, but you have to beat all the others first to challenge me. Rules are rules. We only use dual blades and practice arrows, mind. These drunken fools would run themselves through otherwise. You have to leave everything but your spear and practice arrows at the gate. But I'll look after your gear, not to worry. So, what do you say? Up for some training? <laughs> we'll try this out at least once this episode. That's what I like to hear. Even though we're a little over time. Melee pits that your close quarter fighting skills against other human opponents. Complete all challenges against other fighters to ultimately face the pit master. The pit also allows you to practice your melee skills. Challenges. Oh, that's so upsetting. <laughs> Alright, we can't do that then. But we will definitely be doing that at some point. But we can't do it now, sadly. Check out our quests. I want to do that one next. Of course, yeah, the pits, but we can't do those right now. These gone away. Oh my god, the character files are amazing. And... I just want all this gone. Go all the way. Strike pieces. So what do we get? We got the bristleback. Ram type. Low cost. All right, guys. That's going to do for this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.